So hi and welcome to this another episode of Net Support Radio. Today on the show, I'm really excited to have our technical uh, support manager, Andy Earp, joining me uh, to come along and share a little bit uh, about one of our, our tools here at Net Support called Net Support Manager. So let's start things off by welcoming Andy. Uh, here he is. Hi, Andy. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thank you. Yourself? Yeah, I'm very, very good indeed. Thank you very much. And thanks for giving us some time to come and join us uh, today on the Net Support Radio to come and share a bit about Net Support Manager. Uh, first of all, for those who don't know, uh, Andy, if that's OK, uh, can you show a, a little bit about what Net Support Manager actually is? So Net Support Manager is our um, remote control solution. Uh, it's used in a, a, a varying uh, types of environments from uh, in, in corporate settings to education settings. And it's, it's basically a product that allows support teams and technicians and home workers to, uh, to remote control their, their devices to uh, provide support to them and to, to allow them to remotely work. Well, that sounds, particularly given the world we now live in, that sounds like a really fantastic and useful tool to have as part of your uh, uh, sort of IT manager toolkit, doesn't it? What, what, what have companies told you that is their favourite feature within NetSupport Manager? So NetSupport Manager really kind of breaks down into a, a few different components, really, that we, we talk and discuss with customers a lot. I'd say probably, you know, one of the background components of this is, is the gateway functionality. So... Um, when we're talking with customers, one of the things they really like is the flexibility of them being able to set up their own gateway server to then allow access to their um, devices. And these could be devices um, located anywhere around the uh, around the world, really. So um, that's something that gets a lot of uptake and is something that they, they really like uh, setting up and find a lot of use from that. Um, there's also primary and secondary gateway functionality. So if the primary one goes down, the clients will switch to the second one. But it's all about securing access to those clients and giving access to your technicians and your remote workers the ability to remote control their devices no matter where they are and no matter where those those clients are so the gateway is kind of one of the the main kind of backbones that that sits there and is is used in terms of usability you know there's there's two main components really that that we get a lot of feedback from uh, from customers file transfer being one of them so being able to just copy files between your uh, technicians machines so from what we would class as the control device to the remote client device you know taking files to and from those devices is a really handy and highly used uh, feature that we we discuss a lot with our our customers um, and then also obviously being a remote control product using the view window the view window has a lot of functionality based around that being able to use audio whilst you're remote controlling the device but that is one of the the main obviously features and one of the obviously favorite features of of the software and um, you know that's going to be used for connecting to uh, robots that are based in in factories to allow you to remote onto those devices to support servers to connect to devices connected digital signage screens to uh, point of sale devices so your your tills in different shops and um, just being able to remote control those change the color depth uh, and actually take control of that device um, is really one of the the favorite components of uh, of NetSupport manager so it's really flexible in how it allows you to do that so they're kind of the three main things that we we discuss the view and obviously is, is the one that always uh, is what people are buying the software for and one of the, the favorites that's great stuff, Andy. Thank you so much for sharing that. Such a useful product to have, again, in your arsenal. Um, my next question uh, sort of links into um, sort of what the top sort of feature customers share about helping them save time with the product. But I'm guessing one of them is the fact that you know, Netsport Manager negates the need to have to keep traveling out to sites and, and actually engage with devices in person, as it were. Um, but given that's probably one of the biggest takeaways in terms of saving time, have you got any other sort of things that, that uh, Netsport Manager can help save company's time with yeah so as you say you know you you you, you pick my words there already for some of it is is without having to send an engineer on site really does save you a lot of time but it's not just about you know not having to send out field engineers to go and fix every problem no matter where the machine is it's the automation of tasks 
Um, so you've got this great scripting component available in, in Netbook Manager. So you can automate the collection of files from machines or automate the sending of files to, to remote machines and to perform other tasks like, um, you know, shutting down machines at a certain time. You can script um, a lot of the functionality in Netbook Manager. You can automate via these scripts. You can then schedule those scripts and that will perform the, the tasks um, for you, uh, such as executing commands on machines. And, and items like that. But also you're not limited to um, remote control in one machine at a time. You know, your technician could be connected to a variety of machines. You might have a long file transfer job working to one client, uh, you know, and that's gonna maybe take, uh, you know, half an hour or longer to, to collect or send the files. And whilst you're doing that, you could be connected with your control to other client machines, providing remote support to them. So you, you're not limited to, to kind of just actively working on one client, you've got the multiple connections available with Netsport Manager, and that also cuts down your, uh, your time and helps, helps save time. So it's things like that um, that really kind of you benefit from with, with Netsport Manager. That's great, Andy. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I, I, again, I, I always find our conversations fantastic. I end up learning even more about our products in different settings. So yeah, really useful. And again, uh, some great compelling reasons to consider Net Support Manager uh, within within your corporate space and your your uh, IT management. Um, yeah, so sometimes with technology, it, it can be you know we we need to have this, we need to have this, we need to have this, but. Um, Thinking about Net Support Manager, uh, what issues bring customers to us uh, at Net Support? Where, where they, they feel that like they need Net Support Manager? What, what issues uh, the companies face uh, um, does Net Support Manager help or provide a solution to? So, again, this kind of breaks down into to a few different areas. I'd say, in terms of connectivity, what Net Support Manager um, gives you there is is you've got control over where your traffic is going, if you like. So because it is a, a, a tool that is on premise, it's self-hosted, so the customer can decide where they place their gateway server. They can decide where they deploy out their clients. They can decide who has access to the control component. And by doing that, it gives the customer um, a lot more control over how the product is used <clears throat> and where data between the product to go. So if you want your traffic to all be internal, you wouldn't host your, your gateway externally. You could host it on your, your corporate network, <clears throat> configure all your clients to just talk to that gateway server and keep real control of that. So that's one of the benefits of Netsport Manager, being able to, to control things. Some of the things that's, that's brought to us that, that customers will talk to us about as well is, is tiered remote control access as well. So, you know, it, in some customer support teams, you've got your, your kind of tier one support technicians, your tier two, tier three, and you might want to have varying levels of access depending on um, who's going to be connecting to your, your end users or your client devices. Mm -hmm. You might not want somebody on the tier one team being able to reboot a machine or being able to take full remote control of that machine. You might only want to, to grant them uh, watch mode privileges so that they can't perform any actions, but they can just be monitoring what the end user is doing. Um, mm. And that's something you can do with Netsport Manager with the use of our client profiles. Um, you've got the ability to put in that level of security so that when the uh, control connects to the client, they authenticate as a certain uh, user, if you like, and then that grants them the specific permissions that you've you've allowed. So having that granular level of, of support and access privileges to your clients is, again, one of the reasons why we, we have customers come to us to, to provide the remote support facility. That's great. And I think you hit a nail on the head there, really. That, that, that sort of the, 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 the granular control you can actually apply to it for different roles within your setting, again, just helps everyone to sort of sit within their roles and, and, and facilitate the productivity that's required at the various levels. Uh, so, again, another fantastic share there. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Um, to wrap the conversation up, if we can, uh, now just one, one final question. Uh, I, I do another um, podcast vlog um, called Tip Top Tips, and uh, I, I love getting tip top tips. Uh, sometimes it could be keyboard shortcuts, or uh, it, it could be a, 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 an approach which really works. Or uh, have you got any sort of top tips uh, uh, that, that do you think that you, you sort of hear from um, your the, the the clients that we've already got? Uh, you know, what, what the things the customers come back to you and say, uh, "We love the fact that you can do this." And, and are there any sort of top tips you could share around Let's Put Manager, please, Andy. There, there certainly are. I mean, there's a few kind of hidden gems in the software that you know go a little bit unnoticed by by end users because they they're using it 
you know, primarily as the remote control tool. But you're looking at things like uh, there's an inventory component in, in Netsport Manager. It is a cut down inventory. Uh, and most people just think that that gives you a, a, a snapshot hardware and software inventory. But actually what it also does is it allows you to monitor uh, the running processes, running applications, and the services that are uh, are in use and running on that machine. And it allows the technician, when you're remote controlling a client, if you go into the inventory component and you use those additional tabs, um, it allows you to, uh, to manage them. So if you needed to stop and start services without having to interfere and ask the end user to log off so you can log on with, with admin privileges, if you grant the access to the client to, to make changes there, so it is, it is configurable, um, then that can really save you a lot of time using the inventory component for that. But a lot of people just see it as being the inventory and they, they don't often go in that uh, in that direction. So that often gets missed. A another thing, and this comes down to depending on the, the client base you're supporting, but we have a lot of Netsport Magic customers that are, are supporting clients in their in their thousands. And that's a lot of devices to to have to manage. And, you know, if an end user contacts you and you need to remote their machine <clears throat> and you've got a thousand machines, then it can, you know, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to go through and, and connect to them. So we've got a facility called the PIN server to assist with that. And again, it, it kind of gets missed a little bit by, by customers. Mm. So it's, it's about kind of signposting that we've got that PIN functionality available to make it easier to direct support to the, the, uh, the end user. So they can either type in a PIN and supply it to the, the control user that's talking to them on the phone or the control user can supply the end user with the PIN and it then establishes that connection nice and, nice and easy. So that's a facility that's available in there. And again, a bit that kind of flies under the radar a bit is you get the use of the school components in Netsport Manager as well for that corporate training setting. So it's not just about using the product to uh, deliver remote support to your devices, but you could also use it in a, a corporate training uh, setting as well. And there's a lot of functionality that goes in there. And that, again, can fly under the radar a bit when it comes to, to looking at what the the kind of base functionality of Netsport Manager is. Brilliant stuff. Well, Andy, there's that, a, a fantastic piece of advice there. And again, I've, I've learned plenty myself. For those of you that are interested in learning more about NetSupport Manager, you can, of course, visit NetSupport Manager. You can see the address scrolling across there at the bottom, netsupportmanager.com. And NetSupport Manager um, also has a uh, social media account on Twitter. So if you want to learn more and you're a, a Twitter user uh, and want lots of the latest updates and things as well, you can then also follow NetSupport NSM on Twitter. Uh, we, we regularly share um, hints, tips, updates, things like this recording now, uh, so forth and so on. So thanks so much for taking the time to join me for this conversation, Andy. As always, I've learned absolutely loads from the, from this. Uh, but for now, thank you so much for joining me, Andy. Thank you to you too for listening. Uh, not the band, but you as the person listening to us. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward to you joining us in the future for future episodes on Net Support Radio. Thank you ever so much. Cheers. Yeah.